So today what we're going to talk about is these Kinsa thermometers. This is what the box looks like. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through the first steps of downloading the app for these thermometers. So these are what's called a smart device. So they work with the Bluetooth in your phone. So what that means, I'll show you in a second some details about this, is that there is an app that links up to this thermometer that can um, like track your temperature over time, can track your symptoms, can track multiple people in your family's temperature and symptoms. And it also contributes to um, like data as a whole about the um, frequency of illnesses like flu or COVID in your area. So all of this is private data. None of it is ever linked to you as a person. It's just basically saying, you know, someone in your zip code has um, a fever. So they can use that information then to track how the flu is traveling or how COVID-19 is traveling. Um, and you can share your symptoms on the app as well and track that over time. And the app will give you advice about what to do. So um, if one of your symptoms is really high or really serious, they might encourage you to contact your doctor. Or if you list a, um, a symptom that seems like it might be COVID-19, they might ask you to take a COVID-19 test. So it just gives you sort of advice based on what your temperature and what your symptoms related that you report um, seem like they may be pointing to. I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, these thermometers before I show you the app setup. The thermometers we have are these ones on the left here, okay? The one that sort of looks like, it's not an ear thermometer, it's a, under the tongue. You can use it um, under the tongue, you can use it under your armpit, and if you have a baby, you can use it rectally. Um, so it's, it's versatile in that way. So just to give you a sense of some of the things you can do with this, so you can have individual profiles. I think for, um, actually it's an unlimited number of people. So in your family, um, you can add many, many people on here. You give them each a little profile that has a animal that goes with it, which is kind of cute. Um, you get personalized guidance. So like I said, like it will tell you based on your symptoms and your fever, what you might want to do next. So um, it, it has that based on your age as well. So if you have an infant that has a really high fever, their recommendations are gonna be different than if you have um, you know, an adult that has a high fever. Um, you can keep a log of your family's health. You can get medication reminders. So you can set those up in there. Um, you can get information about local risks for COVID and the flu. And that comes from that um, combined data from people having these thermometers. Again, that's completely private. It's never linked to your name or your information otherwise. It just comes up and I'll show you sort of what this looks like. It adds to the data that makes a map sort of like the one you see here, here on the right. So it, based on the data that they're getting from these thermometers, they can tell you, okay, like this red area is the area where the flu is really high right now. So you can know that the flu is high in your area um, and you're contributing to that data at the same time. The first thing we're gonna do as when we download just about any app, um, we're gonna go to the app store or in the case of my phone, uh, if you have a, a Android phone, you're gonna go to the Play Store, okay? And what you wanna look up is Kinsa, okay? It's spelled K-I-N. S A. All right. And the app that you're looking for is this one right here that looks kind of like it's blue and it kind of looks like a little heart. You're going to click on that. All right. That's the one you're looking for. Now, if you've got that, you're going to hit install. You'll see that mine says just open. It's because it's already installed on my phone. But you should see the button on the left on yours should say install. So that's what you want to do. So once you have it installed, you're gonna either click this button here that says open, or you're gonna find it on your phone, all right? And again, it looks like this right here, this little heart at the bottom and it says Kinsa. So you're gonna open the Kinsa app and this is what you should see. All right, so what you should see is this. So it's asking you to sign up or log in because we're assuming you don't have an account yet. Um, you're gonna say sign up, all right? So you're gonna click on this button that says sign up. And once you do that, this is the screen that you should see. 
So this is just telling you the privacy policy that goes with the Kinsa app. It's like what I said, you can read it if you want to. So if you wanna look at the terms and conditions, you can do that. Um, but just as a sort of brief explanation of it, what it's saying is that, um, that the data that they're sharing is not going to be your personal data. The only thing that it will share in one of those like larger maps is that, oh, you know, someone from this zip code had a fever of 101. And that just goes into like the, the general data for the area, but it's never linked back to you. Okay, so you can feel okay about knowing that. Um, also, they're just saying they're making the disclaimer that they're not a substitute for your doctor. Um, so, you know, this is all advice, but you know, if you ever, you can always contact a doctor, contact, um, you know, emergency professionals if it's that serious, but they're just saying, you know, they're offering you advice, but um, that, you know, contact your doctor in case of any questions. So once you say, I agree to the following, you should see a screen that looks like Oh, that's a little bit about the privacy principle. You won't see that unless you click to see the privacy data. So, okay, this is the big part. So it's gonna say, create your account, all right? And what you wanna do is put in your email address. So the email address that you use most often that you check. Um, so use that. And then you're gonna make a password of at least eight characters, okay? and write that password down somewhere. Make sure you remember that password. Um, it's, you know, it, it, you shouldn't have to enter it every time you go in, but you may have to enter it in the future. So please do make sure that you have a note of that password somewhere, okay? And there's at least eight characters. And then you'll see here too, you can enable it to sign in with your fingerprint if you have that on your phone. Um, that's fine too, but you still need to make a password for it. And once you do enter your email address and password, just click that button at the bottom that says sign up. So once you've done that, the screen you see should look like this. So this is where it's fun. All right, you get to pick one of these animals slash robots you want to be for yourself. So start by setting yourself up in here. So you can be the cat, the penguin, the dog, the monkey, the robot, the Triceratops, any of these, pick whichever one you think best represents your personality. All right, and that's just so you can look and tell people apart in your family if you have multiple people in here, and it's just like a cute thing. So pick your pick your little face and hit save. All right, and once you've done that, you'll see this. So this is important. This is asking you for your birth date, okay? Um, well, first you're gonna, I'm sorry, first you're gonna click on there and put your name, all right? So just type, you can just use your first name. You can use a nickname, whatever you want. That's for your reference. Um, your birthday though is important and here's why. Um, the, it, like I said before, the advice that this gives you is gonna be based somewhat at least off your age. So it's very different if you have a super high fever um, when you're a baby, as opposed to when you're 25 or 50. Um, the advice is gonna be a little different, all right? Um, so they want to know what your general age is um, in order to give you appropriate advice based on your symptoms. If you're not comfortable putting your full birthday, like you don't want to put your whole thing in there, again, this isn't going to be shared, but if for some reason you're not comfortable with that, please just make sure you have the right year because then it will know how old you are. Um, so if you want to just say, you know, if your birthday's somewhere, but you want to say January 1st, whatever year, that's fine, like nobody's gonna check up on that, but please do make sure your year is right because your recommendations are gonna be based on that. So make sure you've got your birth date in there or if not your actual date, at least just the year and hit okay. And then also on there, it's gonna say um, gender and I believe it says male, female or something else. So just enter that how you identify. All right, and then it's gonna ask you if you wanna add family members. You can do that whenever, like you don't have to do that right now. If there's multiple people in your household that you want to use this thermometer, then you can add family members along the way. And the process is just like what we just did for you. All right, and then this is just, this is an extra step, but there are some schools that actually have their own um, school group so that they can trace um, 
they can trace sort of the, the likelihood of people or the number of people who have the flu or are sick in a school community, okay? If you have a child who's in school and you want to track that, you can say, yes, join my school and it'll give you an option to look it up. Not all schools in New York are attached to this, so it may or may not be on there. That's just an option. So you can, if you want to join a school, you can say, yes, join my school, and then it'll give you an option to search for your school. And if it's there, you can click on it and then you'll be in that school, school group. If you don't have children in your family, or you don't want to be part of a school group. I'm not part of a school group because there's nobody, you know, I'm related to that's in school. So you would just say no, skip. And that's what I did. Okay, that's just giving you some information about that. All right, that means you are at the critical step of setting up your actual thermometer. I'll show you what the thermometer looks like. Again, you see there's three different varieties of them on there. Okay, so this is the thermometer. It looks pretty normal, right? You turn it on and it's linked to the Bluetooth on your phone. Okay, so if I take my temperature, it makes a log on my phone in the Kinsa app of what my temperature is. And I can tell it, oh, you know, like I'm having a headache and, you know, nausea or something like that if I'm having any symptoms. And if I happen to have a high fever and I have those symptoms, or like if I have a fever at all and I have those symptoms, it might then give me advice about what to do next. Like, should you call your doctor? Should you take Tylenol? Um, so there'll be instructions along the way like that. And again, the thermometer knows how old I am. So it's basing that advice off of my age as well. And, you know, my gender, um, as much as that might be useful. I'm not sure how much that plays into it. Um, but uh, that's that's one of the sort of perks of this. And then two, you know, in my fever sort of registers in that collected data about what the um, the general picture of, of flu or COVID looks like in the area. All right. And so that's helpful so that we can, you know, they found this really helpful during COVID. So you can track sort of incidents of that along the way. So if you're using this between family members, what you want to do is, well, even if you're only using it for one person, every time you use it afterwards, you want to wipe it off with alcohol, just like a regular thermometer. So if you have alcohol wipes or if you just have a thing of alcohol and like a, a paper towel or something, just make sure you're doing that between people and also just after you use it yourself, just to keep it clean. But you can do that. This is not different than a, um, than a regular thermometer in that way. Like you can do that. It's not going to mess anything up. Okay, this actually is battery operated. Um, it's got uh, the little flat batteries. They're almost like watch batteries. I think they're the bigger size than that. I haven't opened it up to see, but it's battery operated. It's a, what I'm told it's a very long lasting battery. Okay, so it should run for a good while. You don't have to charge it. Um, it has the little um, thing in the back where you can twist it out like with a coin if you need to replace the battery. Um, so it should be, you know, set and ready to go for a pretty long time. So you need to have your Bluetooth on in order for this to link to your phone. That's how it connects. Um, so if you're ever having it where it doesn't show up on your phone, like once you've gotten this all set up and you're doing your thermometer and it doesn't show up on your phone, check that your Bluetooth is on because that's necessary for this information to get to your phone, okay?